Heading out to Boston. What's up? Welcome to the vlog week 46. Week 46 of the vlog. We out. Cambridge. She gave me good brain when she started at Cambridge. <laughs> Kansas anymore, I'll tell you that. Going back to Boston. Who's here? Young God. No, Emerson here, y'all. <laughs> yeah, we made it. Close the door. Yeah, we made it. Emerson here, y'all. First we made you who we are, but then we made it. Oh, that's not a good view. Do you think we can get back out? Oh, yeah. There's a balcony we can get out. We got one big king size bed. Son was pooping in the bait room already. Got a cute little living room. Sunlight. Oh, dude, there's no blinds in here. You're gonna be up at like five o'clock in the morning. Oh my god. So, dude. Let them know. It's nice, right? It's How deep are we rolling right now? Yeah. 40 deep. 40 deep. Don't fuck around. Let's go. She asked if we were getting nine of them today. But I'm like, I can't stop eating it. No, it's really good. Is it too spicy, Rena? Hello. The abs are mad. Hello. <laughs> you got, we turned the f motherfucking thing on, the oven on, and like 30 minutes later, we're like, wait, where's the pizza bagel? Buddy. <laughs> hey guys. Gay. We're here with Brandon. He slept in his shirt, you crazy little lady. Hey Salma, say good morning. It's too early. <laughs> it's like fucking 11.30. It's, it's like 8 o'clock. We're going to get donuts. Man. I'm just going to pop it off here. I'm just going to twist it. You ready? Yeah. Cheers. Like I hit someone. I need help. <laughs> I'm like stuck here dying. <laughs> I feel like the Joker when I just did that. Yeah, penguins can't breathe underwater. Really? <laughs> Out here at our old stomping grounds. Brian, what do you think the hardest class was that you took at Harvard? Macroeconomics. But Mac you gave me good brain like I studied at Cambridge. <laughs> That's so silly and inappropriate. I'll never. How you doing? Alright, so it's Monday morning. We're back in the HQ, ready to dominate some work. The trip was a lot of fun to Boston. Very, very fun. It was me, Brandon, Alyssa, and Salma. Shout out y'all for making the trip fun. I didn't have my computer. Well, I had my computer, but the Wi-Fi in our Airbnb didn't work at all. I didn't do any work this weekend, which felt nice, but... It's not gonna be fun opening up my laptop right now. I feel like absolute shit. I'm just drinking and eating. I just feel super bloated and like <laughs> So first things first, I need to hit the gym. First things first, I'm the realist. 
Remember Iggy Azalea? She was a thing one time. So yeah, I'm gonna hit the gym right now. I'm gonna get coffee. I don't even wanna look at my credit card from this weekend. A couple cool things. One, the campaign for the real estate company is kicking off either Tuesday or Wednesday, whenever I finish mocking up all the advertisements, then that thing is gonna start running live. Money's flooding into those bad boys. I'm also getting on a call with someone from Google tomorrow. Yes, Googly, like the search engine Google. Someone from Google reached out to me. They said they're on a special team there that gets in touch with potential high growth um, partners, I guess, something like that. I'm not really sure what the call is about, to be honest with you, but it's pretty cool, because it's Google, so I'm gonna get after it. So we just finished up here at the gym. Really good workout. It tends to happen when you go on these weekend trips and you put about 6,000 extra calories into your body. You've got a lot of energy to use next time you're in the gym. So I just want to talk about that clip I put on real quick about me on the uh, Stairmaster. You could see throughout the clip, like you could see some points my legs were doing different shit. Like there'd be times where my legs were going straight up. There'd be times where I'm bending and kind of extending at the top. It all goes back to this kind of like principle that I always talk about when I'm, when I'm referring to working out, building muscle, that kind of shit. That mind-muscle connection. The most important thing that you can have when you're lifting. I promise you that when it comes to building muscle, when it comes to being aesthetic and like shaping your body the way you want it to be. What I mean by that is, you know, you can go on the Stairmaster, right? If someone says, I went on the Stairmaster for 10 minutes, great. But when you go on the Stairmaster, there's like 20 different types of, I don't know if you want to call it techniques or like type of things you could do when you're on the Stairmaster. For instance, when I was on there, when my legs were straight up, that was because I was pushing off with my heel and squeezing my ass at the top of each extension. And when my legs were bending and I was extending at the top, that was because I was, I was working more on my calves. Now you can go at a slow pace and make sure you're squeezing the muscle when you get to the top But at the same time you can use the Stairmaster to warm up, right? You can put it at instead of like a four speed You can put it at a six and a half to get your heart rate up You can do hit workouts with the Stairmaster and put it at like an eight speed and almost like you're jogging or sprinting up the stairs Or you can just go a steady pace for a while and just do cardio to burn calories But what I'm saying is like what your goal is right if you're trying to work different muscles And this is not just for the Stairmaster. This is for any exercise any machine any dumbbell movement that you do It's all about focusing on the muscle that you're trying to work like you can go and this is a problem you see with so many people that work out they go through the motions of exercises so carelessly so when they're doing a row or when they're doing bench press or something they're not focusing on the muscle that they're working and you see them kind of stay stagnant at the same weight for so long because they're not pushing the muscle that they're trying to build if you're doing rows and you're not hitting the bottom hitting your chest when you're bringing it down or something i'm talking about like lat rows or if you're not focusing on using your lats underneath here like you're never going to build that muscle and you're never going to be able to break down the muscle tissue so if i can give you one piece Piece of advice it's really focus on the muscle that you're trying to build and when you do an exercise know going into it you don't need to know before you get to the gym but know right before you start the exercise what muscle you're trying to work for instance if you're trying to build your ass yeah the stairmaster can work but you got to make sure you're squeezing your ass at the top of each rep it's not just going to work it for you you will build big legs by going on the stairmaster and it will work your quads but there are a lot of times when you can focus on different muscles when you're doing things and it's these slight little tweaks and all these exercises you do that help you get a more aesthetic looking body and help you build the muscles that you're looking to build. That makes sense, right? You could do shoulder raises, like lateral shoulder raises. And the difference between standing straight up and going like this is you're going to work the front and the side more. All you do is dip down 15 degrees and boom, now you're working more of the side and the back of your shoulder. And that makes you more aesthetic looking. It's these little tweaks and these little details that you really got to focus on when you're doing these workouts. So that's that Monday morning workout in the books. Time to take a business pill and get to work. All right, so we in the kitchen cooking up after the gym and I just wanted to kind of talk about some nutritional things because something I get asked about like semi often about diet and a lot of the world today makes that shit super complicated and no one knows how to properly eat healthy or eat for a better body and things like that. So quickly, I just want to go over it because I swear to God it is not complicated whatsoever, but there's a lot of money in telling people that it is complicated. Thus, all these supplement companies and all these marketing avenues exist for these people that sell you bullshit, but I promise you it's not that difficult. 
What I would suggest, if you are looking to change your physique, your mindset, your health, whatever it is, you have to have a goal in mind, first of all, whether it's to lose fat, whether it's to build muscle, whether, you know, whatever, whatever it may be. Let me just crack these eggs right quick. I'm mixing some whole eggs in with egg whites. About to make a little omelet. I'm gonna throw some sausage and peppers and onions on this thing, or peppers and onions, not sausage. If you have a Trader Joe's by you, I highly suggest getting these fire roasted bell peppers and onions mixed, throw it on the skillet for like 10 minutes, let it darken up, let it burn up a little bit and it tastes mm -hmm. Whisk them little eggers up. You might be thinking like, why is this kid giving me nutritional advice, workout advice? Normally people don't like to take advice from people unless they look like fucking meatheads. And to be honest with you, I could look like that if I want to do All you have to do is eat like a fat fuck and then diet down a little bit. But I would take my body type over someone who's an extra 40 pounds of muscle any day of the week. Back to what I was saying. The first and most important thing is obviously knowing your goal, what you want, what your body to look like. And fuck those people who say it's 50% in the gym, 50% in the kitchen. That is completely wrong. It is 95% diet. Oh, maybe 90% diet, 10% workout. First thing I would say is number one, calories are king. I know you don't want to count your calories, but you have to be able to get a, a kind of like a mindset or at least a knowledge, knowledgeable foundation of how much you can eat, like how much personal you can eat. Every, every person is different when it comes to how much they can eat in a day and say the same weight or gain weight or lose weight. So first thing I would say is download the MyFitnessPal app, right? You're new to everything. Download the MyFitnessPal app. Get a food scale. I have one back here. I haven't used it in probably like six to eight months because I kind of know like what I'm eating and shit like that. But if you're new, and this will take a few weeks to kind of adapt to. Get a food scale, you can order one for like $10 off Amazon. From there, I would say if you're a guy, what you wanna do is probably start your diet no matter what you're doing. Gaining weight, losing weight at maybe 2,500 calories. If you're really big, maybe you're pushing like 225 to 280 in the, in the weight range, maybe up that to like 2750, 2800 calories. If you're a chick, I would start between 1800 and 2000 calories a day. So you're a dude that weighs 180 pounds, right? You wanna eat 2500 calories a day for seven days. It doesn't matter what you eat, just 2500 calories a day for seven days. Anywhere you go, you could do this anywhere because any fast food restaurant, almost any restaurant nowadays has nutrition facts, right? And if you're, and if you're going based off food, if you think this is complicated to kind of dis dissect, it's really not. This is why you get a food scale, right? Cause you get, right? So it says one cup is whatever, uh, 30, cal 30 calories, right? That's 85 grams. So what you do is just pour it onto a food scale and then you can put this in this barcode into my fitness pal and it'll, it'll, this food, exact food will pop up. So if, if you put 85 grams in, it'll, it'll put 30 calories in there. If you pour in 150 grams by accident, you can change the measurement within my fitness pal really easily with a click of a button. So you wanna measure what food you're eating and make sure you're eating the same amount of food each and every day for about a week. And from there, that's when you see like, hey, did I gain weight? Did I lose weight? And you wanna weigh yourself in the morning, every single morning, right after you use the bathroom. Don't weigh yourself after you go to the gym. Don't weigh yourself before you go to sleep. Don't weigh yourself after you eat breakfast. First thing in the morning, you wake up, you go take a shit or you take a piss, step on the scale. Same scale, same spot, every single day, the same thing, right? Don't weigh yourself throughout the day because the water weight's gonna fluctuate. That's how you get a real, a real read for how much you weigh each and every day. And your weight is gonna fluctuate on a day-to-day -day basis depending on when you eat your calories, exactly like what calories you do eat. Foods have more carbs or more salt in them so it's gonna retain more water weight. But it's an overall trend, right? So after seven days, you should see a trend of whether or not you're staying the exact same weight or if you're losing like one to two pounds, then you stick with that number of calories, right? It's a slow process losing weight. It's not gonna be a quick thing. Any diet that says you're gonna lose 10 pounds, 30 pounds very quickly is not a real diet that you're gonna ever be able to stick with. It's not a lifestyle. You're losing water weight, you're not losing fat. So it's not even gonna look good when you start shedding the pounds off of you. So you wanna pick a, pick a calorie intake, whatever it is, you can start with anything you want. It's just for testing purposes. Get a food scale, measure your food for one week straight, see what happens to your scale on, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? After the week, you should see a trend line. Like one day, you might start weighing 160 pounds. The next day, you might be at 158. The next day, you might be at 161. But then the next day, you know, it eventually will even out and you'll see whether or not you're gaining weight, you're losing weight, or you're staying around the same. If you're staying the same and, you're, and your goal is to gain weight, then you add a couple hundred calories. If your goal is to lose weight, then you take that 2,500 and maybe knock it down to 2,300. And then you do that for a week, right? It's very simple, this is, this is it. I don't wanna get it too complicated for you, but I would also say you want a gram of protein 
per pound of body weight. So say you are starting off at 160 pounds. You wanna eat 160 grams of protein. And that, that can all be measured within my fitness pal. Anytime you track a food, it has the grams of carbs, fat, protein, those kind of things. I promise you, after you do it for a week, two weeks, three weeks, it gets really simple to do. But if this is confusing to you at all and you wanna know more about it, feel free to leave a comment down below. Feel free to email me. I can, I can go over it, more simple version of it. So my, my basic steps here would be, one, figure out your goal, fat loss, gain muscle, whatever it is, figure that out. Pick a calorie goal, pick a calorie limit or a calorie number that you're gonna eat for, 20, uh, for seven straight days. You need a scale, both food scale and just step on the scale to figure out your weight. From there, you just measure each food that you put into My Fitness Pal. I don't wanna get too complicated, so you could start off with the calorie goal. I would say that because you know for protein, you want to maintain your muscle. If you're losing weight, if you're gaining weight, you obviously wanna have enough protein in there to build new muscle. So I would say one gram of protein per pound of body weight. So you can do that as you're, as you're tracking. Within, if, if 2,500 calories is your limit, you can easily get 180 grams of protein in there. And the rest of the calories can come from anything you want. I would say, obviously, you want to have a good amount of vegetables, uh, fruits, and things like that. But if you want to eat rice, eat fucking rice. If you want to eat potatoes, you want to eat white bread, you want to eat fucking peanut butter. Whatever it is you want, fill the rest of those calories with that. Get a good amount of protein, stick to one calorie limit, see what happens after seven days. From there, you could decide where you want that to move. And then that's where like cardio and workouts come in and stuff like that. You can, rather than lowering your calorie limit, you can up your cardio. Because cardio is just a tool to either burn more calories or you know or not burn more calories really just a, a math equation it's like food intake your maintenance calories to stay the same weight and your cardio and it's just a seesaw that's all i wanted to say i would also say as another tip don't drink your calories don't drink regular soda stick to diet stuff don't drink gatorade don't drink fucking cream in your coffee cut that shit out because that doesn't help fill you up especially if you're dieting if you're trying to lose weight and you're at a, uh, a certain calorie goal, then putting liquids into your diet is not gonna help you keep full. And our omelet is done. Look at that, that was actually a pretty goddamn good omelet. There's peppers and onions in there. Ooh. And you'll notice if, if you use a consistent calorie level over a seven day period, you will start feeling a lot less bloated. You'll feel a lot more you know, normal. You won't be focusing on food so much. It, it'll start to kick in and you'll feel a lot better about things. And it doesn't matter what type of food you eat, but just eating the same amount of calories, your body will start getting used to the to the energy and the fuel that you're putting into your body. All right, so I'm about to get on this call with Google. I still have no idea really what the call is about. This is her original email. It says, hi, Nicholas. I work at Google on a new program focused on digital advertising, and we work with a handful of brands each quarter that we believe have high growth potential. My team provides strategy recommendations, account builds, and performance optimizations for the companies we accept into the program. I want to briefly chat about BDGE and your plans to see if you might be a good fit which day this week or next week works for you to chat and see what it's all about. Figure a call with Google can't really be a bad thing. Hi, is this Nick? Yep, this is Zan. Hey, hey Nick, it's yeah, Zan from Google. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Okay, so I really, this is not going to be a super long call. I really just want to take um, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes to kind of go over why I'm reaching out to you how we could support you as a potential partner. Um, understand your... Thanks, Ann. Appreciate the time. Thanks, thanks. Okay, bye-bye. All right, so basically they're a team at Google. They're a small team. She says she's a five-person team. They find companies with large growth potential, and they take over all the marketing for them, which is actually pretty awesome knowing that, because I worked in a marketing agency, and if you're a company, right, you don't get to you don't get to just pay Google to advertise for you. I mean, you could work with them as a partner, but for the most part, if you're a company, right, you're working with an agency. So you're paying this agency thousands of dollars a month to market for you. Google straight up, like they, I know they're inside the facility, right? They're inside Google, so they know what they're doing, right? They know how to get on top of Google search results. They know what kind of advertisements work within their platform, which is a great opportunity, but we both kind of came to the conclusion that I'm not at that point yet where they, they're looking for companies to be spending $100, $200 a day on advertising. And obviously that's $3,000, dollars dollars four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 a month pay them in advertising. One, I don't have the capital to do that. Two, based on how my store is set up right now, I'm not gonna see return. I don't have like my income 
and what I'm doing right here is not, my products I'm selling is not where I'm getting return on, right? Like, you know, most of my income comes from marketing for, for doing the freelancing and, and running the Facebook and Instagram ads for my marketing clients. My income, all this YouTube, all this fantasy football, the BDGEAT.com, the blog, that store is all side stuff. It's hobby that has nothing to do with like my financial income. I do, however, see that as a long-term play. But for right now, I'm growing it up slowly, organically, and I don't wanna put paid money, I don't wanna put money into paid traffic to try to build it up, because I don't think I'm there yet, I don't think I need it. Based on how quickly my channel grew this summer, I expect it to exponentially grow again next summer and the summer after that. So I don't need to really put paid marketing because the organic growth, as long as I keep working hard, putting out good content and bringing in new people organically, I'm not gonna need to pay for marketing. So we decided that like, you know, when, when I have more products in the store, when it would be beneficial for me to be driving thousands of more people to my website or to my YouTube channel or whatever. And the cool thing about this is, you know, when you have the straight up partnership with Google, not only are they gonna hook you up with SEO, right? Getting you on top of the Google search rankings, but they also own YouTube, right? Which is good for me because I need, those are the two keys for my fantasy football thing right now, right? Fantasy football is all about people searching for your shit, so Google is huge, but I can't get on, like my blog will never get on the first, second, third page because you're competing with ESPN, you're competing with Fantasy Pros, you're competing with Yahoo, right? So my shit is never gonna get up there. However, if I'm partnered with them, they could obviously take that over and, and get me higher search rankings and I'll get a lot more traffic through SEO. But right now, all my traffic is basically through YouTube and me like influencer marketing myself and telling you, hey, if you wanna go check out my blog, go to the site. So all my traffic comes from that. The other thing obviously is, like I said, they own YouTube, so they'll definitely be able to drive more traffic to it. And they take over all the marketing, they create all the ads and all that kind of stuff. Definitely something I will consider in the future when I feel like it will be beneficial. Because right now, it, what if we send a, a couple thousand people to my website, right? Like they're gonna go to my store. They don't have, they have no idea what my logo stands for. They have no idea like why like why the fuck would they buy a sweatshirt and the only other thing that really sold on my website was the was the draft guide that i sold for like five dollars a pop but all of the sales i get on my site are from organic traffic basically from youtube it's like people who fuck with my channel people who support me buy my sweatshirts buy my t-shirts things like that and the people that know me from youtube buy my draft guide you would never just stumble across a random website and buy a t-shirt or buy a draft guide so that's where i feel like i need to get more of a foundation before i think i need to pay for marketing I need to have more solid products before I send someone to a product page and think that they're actually gonna buy. So I can give them $100 a day and they might be bringing me 5,000, 10,000 new customers or potential customers to my store, but the ROI is not gonna be good. I'm not gonna get a lot of money from those people because they have no idea who I am to begin with. That's really where that's at. Headed to the movies. Big, big fucking bro day today. Baby steam. Savage 21, 21 Savage. Going to see Maze Runner. I personally think Maze Runner is one of the most underrated movies of our generation. Whoa. Generation? Whoa. I don't know why it doesn't get the respect. People nah, because Hunger Games got all the madness. Ooh. That's what I'm saying. And Hunger Actually, Games is thoroughly Games. overrated. It's like a poor man's Hunger Games. I don't think, in reality, I think, it's a rich man's Hunger Games. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Love that. Really, I thought Hunger Games were overrated. I didn't want to see the last one. The last I don't think one was, was uh, bad. The last couple of ones were bad. I disagree. I enjoyed, I enjoyed them. The first two were Joy. The first, I read all the books. Did you? <laughs> Did I say Nerd. that out loud? <laughs> Nerd! My bad. Who reads? What the book? What's up, buddy? You guys an extra pig? Dude, he's what? a toy ass He's weird. Can you see it? Yeah. Oh, wait, you could see it from here? Six fingers? He looks like Peter Pettigrew from Harry Potter. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? YouTube it. Check it out. I'm not. How are you going to talk to you about Hunger Games, yet you're a fucking oh, Harry okay. Potter, Lord of the Rings, Maze Runner fucking fiend? I'm a huge Maze Runner fan. But you can't be shitting on Hunger Games. I'm shitting on it. They you, could, you even agreed. They could all be agreed. good. They could all be good. You agreed that Maze, um, Hunger Games last two were pretty bad. The last one. I just okay, mean. Then, so, but the first one was epic. I didn't say what. I said they're just overrated. He lying. If you ever buy snacks and food at the movie theater, you're a punk bitch. You gotta come in strapped. We got Eminem, Monster, the gummies, dollar piece. Just hope they don't catch you. It'll be a felony if they caught me. That is going to wrap up this week's video. Show the Maze Runner. Three suck horrible. I'm devastated because huge fan of the Maze Runner series as a whole. Gorgeous. This last one was terrible. Just stupid action the entire time, but it wasn't good. I mean, I guess if you've seen the first two, go see the third one, because why not? It's really long. It was like two and a half hours, but it was kind of fun because we had the entire theater to ourselves. We were just kind of screaming. And Steve kept throwing fucking milk duds everywhere. That's neither here nor there. So I'm just working from my bed today, basically. And, uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I'll be back next Saturday. Till then, do
juices. <laughs>